What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable insight and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom and uh, all the fun stuff to build an audience, attract more clients. We're going to talk about all of it because we're talking about um, the future a little bit today, and the future is not that far off. We're talking a little bit about predictive analytics. We're talking about technology. We've got a very special guest, someone that's uh, very close to the show, you could say. Uh, we'll get to him <laughs> in a second. But first... The junior grandmaster is in the co-pilot seat where you so belong, many, many miles away from me so that you're not up in my, in my personal space. Greg McDaniel, what's up today? What up, homie? Man, we're back. We're going to rock this thing out today. We got our kick-ass show. My brother Brad uh, is going to be here with us, and we're going to be talking about the, the cool stuff that he's been working on, predictive analytic, where the future of real estate's going to go, you know, data, you know, how to find your next client in the future, and just a ton more. So I'm really excited. We had... Um, we had my father on, the Grandmaster on, uh, what, the two two weeks ago? When did we have him on? I think it was last week. Last week. Oh, yeah. God. See, the first thing to go is a memory, and I can't remember the second. But uh, having him on, and so this is just going to be a blast. And I have... Uh, I've been working with my brother when the when he started this company about ten years ago under a different name. And I was the first person to ever touch these this data ever on God's green earth. And it was just absolutely mind blowing and it's come light years from where it used to be. So it's super badass and Brad, you um welcome to the show first off. Gene, welcome as <laughs> Thank always. Thank you for having me, party. man. And Appreciate you, it. You, just, you just came off winning first place at an event, right? What did you where did you win first place at? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, in December, Keller Williams put on an event called Future. Uh, I think we all call it FutureCon. And uh, what they did is they had 180 companies that were wanted to basically get in front of the Keller Williams agent base. And they said, all right, agents, tell us which ones you want to actually hear from. And out of that, and then narrowed down to 30, which we were one of those winning 30 or top 30, who then came and presented in Vegas uh, in early December. And uh, what we were, the category we were competing for was top company in AI and predictive analytics. And we ended away walking with the most votes uh, by about, I think we had 60% of all votes. And there were uh, 64%, something like that. And there were over 60,000 uh, people that were either live streaming the event and voting or that were in attendance at the ballroom in Vegas. So yeah, that was very exciting. We got uh, met a lot of really nice people, and uh, I guess I think what was really compelling is just um, that we look at AI not as a marketing automation tool, um, but we actually want to solve the problem, um, so unlike what, has been done what, before. What what do you do for us for us layman commoners who not, do not speak big data and tech talk? What do you do, dude? I mean, what do, what, what, do? Problem, what do you do now? Keep it simple. Make, you know, you know, coloring, big blocks, big, big print. What do you do? We predict <laughs> he's going to put the like, house on the market in the next 90 days. Like, in order to do that, uh, we've had down, to go, go through over 23 data scientists. Um, we have a vast amount of data from sources that I didn't even think we could buy from or source from. Um, and like we've then had to take it. I'm sorry. Like the NSA? Uh, things like that. I mean, like, you know, I didn't know that you could buy uh, credit, can, if you've applied for a payday loan or credit consolidation, basically all of that little text, whenever you fill out a form anywhere online, even those, the more sensitive it is, the more likely they're selling that, um, you know, we're, 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 we've acquired. And uh, I couldn't actually believe it. Oh my so you God. said the more, <laughs> you said the more, <laughs> the more sensitive it is, the more likely they are to sell it? Oh yeah, that's that's what's that's scary about it. It's like we got some of the stuff. Like, I mean, if you read those disclosure statements, they basically it's the, it's TCPA compliant, third party offer opt in, and uh, we know when the more you need something like a payday loan or things that are sensitive, you, you click yes and go, and you, no one reads those things. So it's like that. Uh, what that uh, South book? Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Oh man, what was it? A Family Guy episode or South Park episode about no one reads the Apple opt in and they make the crazy animal. I mean, it's like people just don't read that stuff and they can do anything they want. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, uh, yeah. Yeah. So basically, if they're if they're in a de desperate situation, they're pretty much uh, giving that data away, giving the permission to to sell it to anyone. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you can get crazy, crazy data. So get, getting back to the big point. So you can predict who's going to move in the next 90 days. That's that's the that's the heart and soul of it, right? That's the heart and soul of it. Um, it, it is um, the, well, the way we look at it, it's the cornerstone to the problem, 
right? Um, if you're looking for buyers, we believe that Facebook portals have done a very good job solving that. Um, you know, people love pictures. They're gonna look at the two, four, six million dollar homes and buy a $300,000 home, but they have you on the site, you're integrating or in, in, interacting with agents. And so the buyer side works there as well as people search for homes by zip codes and so forth. So you, you can also do PPC for buyers. On the seller side, no one searches Google for their own house or things within a zip code because it's their house, right? And people don't, you know, they go and they do some, you know, what's my house worth here and there. But and, and to a large degree, the sell side has been what's been able to evade uh, anyone actually applying real technology to. And so that's why we took it on as a big challenge. And we intentionally have come at it solving it, not using a lot of that online intent data that's cookie based because we were worried about what was happening. When now what is happening, as you've seen in the big announcements of the Google phasing out cookies and so forth, um, we wanted our platform and our solution to work regardless of if there was online intent data available or not. Now we're at a point now where we're layering in, we're starting to layer in some of that because okay, it's, I, when we look at it as free signal, um, but it also, it's elusive. And there's a lot of solutions that have been built before that just buy a little bit of that and then they throw automated marketing at it. Um, which fails in the long term because this is too big, this is too hard of a problem to solve. Okay, so, so let, let's, yeah, go ahead, Greg. I was going to say, for, you know, we'll, say we'll take a, a, a top down look at this thing. So you're going to take a zip code, a county, uh, a, a data set, right? And then you're going to run it through your algorithm. And it's going to plop out, hey, go talk to these people, don't talk to those people. Is that that's what you're saying? And it has what kind of what kind of predictive numbers are you looking at? Because you predicted like something like two plus billion dollars in the last 90 days of sales, and then your accuracy numbers are through the roof and only climbing. So explain that level because I know it. I've lived it. I've been a part of this. I get it. But a lot of people don't understand that part, and people's heads are going to slightly explode. And I want that to happen because I want them to come back and listen to this and then contact you because this is this is literally being able to know exactly who to talk to in a certain amount of time to get to get more likely sales instead of doing the shotgun approach. So break it down for me. Sure. Um, I could throw a lot of stats at you, but what we find is three numbers work the best. Mm -hmm. One in 10, one in 10 of our predictions actually lists in the first 90 days. So one in 10 in 90. Okay, so you have 100, 100 people, 10 listings. You, just, you, you take, take yeah. so let's say you have a hundred people, you just bury them with, 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 with prospecting door knock, mailers, social media, you know, air, land and sea, right? And you, you really suck at your conversion rates, 10 people list. Now you have, you know, let's say five of them already have relationships. Now you have five. So you can, let's say you get two out of those 10. Mm -hmm. Would that be a success or would that be a failure? I think that would be uh, realistic. You know, Gene. when you look at how agents how agents engage, you're not going to get everybody. But when you look at what they're what you're comparing us against, which would be, let's say, say online marketing, right? Uh -huh. Today there are over 400 leads generated per transaction. That's right. There's 200 million online leads generated annually, right now for what roughly five million transactions every year. The, the number of leads being generated continues to hockey stick up under the right. Yet the number of transactions remained relatively constant. So that means 399 of the leads you buy online are crap. That's just <laughs> it, those are the numbers. Now we look at what we're doing. You know, we said, okay, could we could we invest in SEO and and PPC and landing pages and all? Of course we could. But that's been done, and we know the numbers. And we said, if we got a team of data scientists to attack the problem from that approach, what could we change? You know, could this actually move the needle significantly? And what we're finding is that even in our, you know, our average is one in 10, um, you know, we are now a thousand percent better than a coin flip or the market at random, right? So we use a better than random metric in all of our evaluation results. So we say, okay, in this market, one out of every 87 properties listed in the last 90 days. Okay. And then we look at our model. Okay. One out of every eight of our predictions listed. Okay. We're 10 X better. That's good. Right, like that's the way that we look at it because that's the way we expect our clients to look at it as well. They should, we should hold ourselves to the same high standard. So when we look at taking that one in 10 and 90 approach, right, just keep, that's what we quote now. Um, in our October files that we did deliver to clients, 
Um, as they continue to mature, Greg threw out the number of 2.5 billion. Uh, we correctly predicted 2.5 billion dollars in early December. Um, where that model ended up was at 3.6 billion. That's where it's at today that Damn. we've correctly predicted. So it, it continues to evolve. Now we find that our models, uh, like our prediction window from, from a certain date is, hey, within the next 90 days, this is what should happen. Humans are very irrational. And so, especially around large transactions, we find that, you know, things do push them into that second 90 days, so that 180 day window. Uh, think of it about 80% of the values in the first 90, you get about 20%-ish, 15 to 20% that spill over into that second 90 days. So, you know, when we talk to clients about how to work with us, it's, it's a high contact permission to engage first 90 days multi-channel approach, and then a slower long-term drip after that. Interesting. Gene, I want you to take your marketing hat and go balls deep on this. And what, how would you, you just got a data set, Matt Johnson and his wife, Julie, they're a real estate team. Uh, he, he has to sell a lot of houses. He's got three obese you know, wood denting insulin sucking little troll babies. How would you help Matt Johnson and Julie, real, a, a Julie team sell real estate with Brad's data? Uh, listen, uh, my head's like full of shit right now right because the numbers are crazy like before i get seriously before i get into that i'm just i got i got a lot right so i'm, I'm kind of i'm stuttering here yeah like sure. one of the things is one out of every 10 if i'm an agent i know here's where brad's problem is going to end up being and if he doesn't already see it from a marketing perspective i know that 100 out of 100 agents are calling bullshit right so like if, if I said to them, look, I have a system for you that's going to – if you want to just do one deal a month, all you got to do is talk to 10 people. They're going to go, bullshit. So only because, because like you said, the data that's online, it's just 1,000 to 1, right? Like you're, you're never going to convert that from Zillow like that. So, so I'm curious, before I get into how I'd help Ma, uh, Matt and his insulin-sucking babies market that, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what kind of <laughs> tactics Brad uses to convince Matt even if it, or, or that I would convince Matt to say, this is real, dude. Like, I know the data says certain things, but until I buck up the money to try it in my area, I don't give a shit about your data in Texas, right? Like, it's just going to change, right? No offense, because I know, you know, I love Texas, but, but I, I'm curious what kind of, what kind of opposition you come up against when you, when you have an agent that's in there and that's actually taking a look at this. Yeah, no, perfect question. Uh, and it's pretty simple, actually. Um, Thanks to what Smart Zip and Offer had have done, they actually help us sell because we have a lot of agents that are top teams that are very innovative and want to adopt this, but have gotten burned in the past by, hey, pay me a lot up front, come use my platform, and I'm going to make a margin everything you do, and I'm going to lock you into a 12-month contract, and maybe something I tell you today will happen in 12 months from now because their windows are 12-month windows, right? So we flip the script on them 180 degrees. We said, tell you what, we're going to charge you a very small license fee, and we're talking $200, $300 a month for a full county, not a zip code, right? Okay. So it's very low bar, barrier to entry. That allows us to then very selectively pick the client because we don't work with everybody. We limit the number of licenses based upon the market density. So if it dictates one person or one team, great. Huge counties, it can handle more. But we don't want to you know, have cannibalization within a county. We don't want our, our business model is not the traditional prop tech SaaS. Hey, fill the chairs, outsell the chairs, outsell the churn. We don't we don't want every agent. We want the best teams that can execute because the vast majority of our revenue and all of our profit comes in the back end in the form of 10 percent of, of south side commission. So we say, let's partner with you. Let's not sell you. Let's qualify you that you're the right partner for us. And then let's go do this thing. So we usually do a six month pilot. It's like, hey, evaluate us. We're gonna evaluate the business metrics the same way. And if, if we're not seeing you guys execute, then you know, we're gonna find a better partner because if the data is showing the results, we want the, we're only looking for the best local operator because a national brand we don't think can work. We think that we understand the value of that brand that has been invested in on a local county level, maybe multi-cana. So that's the first piece, right? Once they kind of understand that, okay, I'm not asking for $10,000 for them just to, I don't know, get a single file. Um, the second piece then is how do they engage with us? Well, the top teams, now that we're only talking about that tier, 
they know what to do. They have systems in place. We make sure that one of our qualifications questions is jokingly, can you spell HubSpot? Right? I mean, is there someone on your team, right, that can do the multi-channel marketing for you? And if you can, then great. Okay, then here, this is data that can supercharge what you're doing today, right? So, A, you don't have to change anything. Now you can do it a lot better to this group. So don't come to us, new login, learning curve, let us take a margin, whole new process for your team to understand. There's none of that. They just continue to be better at what they already do. Um, and we don't say it's going to happen in nine months. We say it's going to happen in 90 days. So do better what you already do. We push the data to you, and it's a 90 days, not a nine-month prediction, once you understand the, the, the economics. Yeah, that makes sense. It, it does. And the thing about this stuff is that, you know, since I was the one that took the original list out on the doors, I went door knocking with this thing and it said, skip these five doors, hit this door, skip two doors, hit, go to that door and so on and so forth. I'm like, this is retarded. You know, why the fuck am I going to skip all these houses? I have all these opportunities to, 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 to go and, you know, door knock. And I will, I hand to God within 90 days, or actually with at the first one that blew me away, it was, was an area called Roundtail Country Club. Like I took the first list out and obviously that's garbage compared to what Brad's producing now. Dude, like five or six of these like hundred or, or like, like 25 properties listed within like three months. I was blown away because of what happened and then I became a believer and I've been, we've been using it ever since. And it, it is a good question because Gene, you know, we all have been sold so much BS like, hey, just do one deal and we'll pay for yourself. Or hey, I got the magic pill that will solve everything in, in, in your real estate life. This is something that has been so much blood, sweat, and tears has been put into it that it's, it is one of those things. Like, and that's why I love about Brad's model is that it's not pay me and then I give you. It's I give you and I watch what you do. And if you don't do a good job, I take, I take the toy away because it's so powerful. So how would you market it now, Gene? Well, first of all, that he said something that makes me nervous, which is HubSpot. I know that 98% of the agents that are out in the world have no idea what that is. What is so HubSpot? that's that's going to be the first that would be the first question I would have right like you need to have a system in place that's going to and the other part too that I'm I'm wondering is Matt Johnson and your wife Trina is is Trina um, is Julie yeah, I just picked I don't know where that came I, from I was say when did I marry someone from Florida <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from um, but the, but this is interesting and again like I'm just learning here right Greg I will tell you this. You and I have talked about Brad. I had a conversation with Brad on the phone about a year ago about some of this stuff. So my, my knowledge is limited, right? So I'm sort of learning with the agents. But um, I do remember you telling me about when you got that date and you went door knocking. And I remember that conversation about how you were like, dude, it's scary how good this is, right? So I think, obviously, references would be a big deal. That's how I would market it to Matt. Like, we got people that are working the system. The other thing I, I think is what I'm hearing, you kept saying teams, and I think there's something there to, like, you, I guess you're not doing this to individual agents because the amount of workload that you're going to put put towards them would crush them, right? So you need somebody, like you said, with HubSpot and with the knowledge to have so probably a team that has a seller's agent and a buyer's agent or three buyer's agent, an ISA, you know, a team lead, all these things. Is it required for these agents to have teams? We found that... When there is more than a solo agent, the probability of success goes up. Um, and even if it's just uh, a three-man team or three-woman team, the simple fact that they're uh, able to um, delegate prior, uh, different roles and responsibilities um, means that they can take a larger, usually a larger vision on what, what they want to go do. Um, and they've also probably invested in tools that I consider force multipliers. So, you know, they have a direct mail or a triple dial or, or a drip campaign or something to do Facebook uh, advertising. And, you know, any one of the channels that you can pick there, plug this in. And now you just have a much, much smarter way to use your time to have a higher ROI for your team as a whole. So, no, uh, it's not a... It's not a hard requirement. I have made several exceptions early on, and most of the time, um, you know, listing appointments or something else took 
priority out of executing on the list. Uh, and when our business model, you know, our financial metrics are tied to action, then I'm investing as you as much as you're investing in me because I'm not asking for $10,000 today. I'm asking for a couple of hundred dollars just so I know that you're qualified to use it. So, I mean, that, that's, I think, the big delineation. And we've, we've even worked with some um, and some of our clients today that are the, the next-gen brokerages that are venture-backed and have that whole marketing team. And, I mean, you know, all the way down to where you have a really smart um, real estate professional that has all the systems in play with maybe some VAs. Okay, you know what? In the right size counties, that plays very well. Now, would that play in Cook County or Maricopa County or some of these massive counties where there's millions of properties? Probably not. But in places that, you know, that is the most efficient way to operate, damn right, we want to work with you. Hmm. So that's, that's interesting. I'm getting more clarity here, right? So, Greg, yeah. so going back to your initial question as I dig up more information from Brad, mm -hmm. like, I love the partnership model. I love the fact that Brad would say to, to Matt, listen, I'm taking 10% of what you make. I'm not making money off the $300 county fee, right? That's You're probably upside down there. So it's in yeah, your are. best interest and my best interest to produce these leads one out of 10. Shit, I want to hit five out of 10 for you, right? Because then you're getting 10% of those five deals as opposed to $300 a month. So I, I, in my world, I would say to Matt, Let's talk about your marketing budget. Let's talk about a percentage of that marketing budget going towards a six. Now, Brad, do you have to, is it a year contract, a six-month contract? How's it work? Uh, we signed a six-month contract, and it's somewhat selfish on our side because we have to make sure the business metrics go both ways. We're not trying to lock you in. The, the light monthly license fee isn't like, gotcha for six months. Ha, ha, ha. No, because that's a failure. It took time for me to sell you, get you online. Like That is a failure if that happens. Um, and so we are looking for plugging the right people in, obviously as fast as we can, but without being frivolous. Right. So let me see if I got this right. I sign a six-month agreement with you. It's eighteen hundred dollars, you know, give or take. Yeah. And if we do no deals, it was eighteen hundred dollars. The lowest possible risk. I mean, but you still have to pull your wallet out, which is the thing that if I gave it away for free. Then it'd be like, yeah, well, maybe I'll work it. I don't know. Like, no, I want there to be skin in the game two ways because I've got skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, Greg, I don't, there's no marketing because... behind this. It's, it's easy. Yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting because I think this might feed, and I'm curious, Brad, what you think about this because I think we're going to start seeing, to see more and more of this. My, my theory at this point is that based on what I'm seeing, I can see the real estate industry, especially whenever the next downturn hits, going through a major consolidation where you get a bunch of individual part-timey, you know, people that don't take the business seriously kind of exit. The, there's a percentage of the people that are, that will stick around, that they're successful enough that they'll stay independent. I think a, a chunk of those will start going to brokerages like EXP to cut costs, right? And then I think there's a chunk of people that will go, look, I've been doing business the old way and now I am competing against people that have drip campaigns, direct mail and all this stuff happening automatically because they're part of bigger teams. And I think we might see a widening of the gap between what the big teams can do and how many, how much of the market they are taking versus what's left over to be split among all these individual kind of solo agents. And if I'm right about that, I mean, the, this plays right into your hands because you're going after the people that are those teams that already have those widening margins where they're pulling away from the solo agent, the Greg Harrelsons of the world that have had drip campaigns for 10 years, they already yeah. outpace, uh, you know, all, all but the best solo agents in their market. So I think we're going to see something where I, where the average solo agent, maybe five years from now, is going to have a much more serious decision to make versus staying independent and trying to make all and trying to find this data themselves and figure out who they need to talk to because they can't talk to everyone and you can't just buy a few leads here and there because that doesn't make sense, right? Versus going and joining a team that has tools like this, but you're going and you're plugging into a team. And I think that's going to be much more of a very serious, like apples to apples decision than it is now, where most people are automatically going to be a solo, and then maybe some of them go over here to join a team. You know, if they're if they're hard, have recruited heavily, I think it's going to be. I think at the 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 I don't know what you'd say that the balance is. You know, like the scales are going to balance a little bit, to where it's more of an even choice. So I would agree with that with this caveat that 
those solo agents in five years from now won't be the same solo agents that are today. Today, you have solo agents that do the same things as large companies. They're buying paying for PPC, they're buying one-off point solutions, and they're having enough success to stay in the game. What I think you'll see is you'll see a migration and a consolidation to larger entities, whatever those are your back flat fee, low cost, a mega team expansion. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. And that's why there's a lot of venture money going at things like Homeward, Open Door, Door.com, Homey, RealEye, because it's it's a viable model if you can make all of your margin on the ancillary services, right? So they can lose money or almost make, you know, break even on the, the, the low cost fee and make 75 to 78% of their margin on title, escrow, and mortgage. Right, mm -hmm. and so that independent agent, how do they survive in the future? They're going to own communities. They're going to be the ones that um, play tennis every Wednesday from 11 to 1, and all the wives and the people that are actually aren't homeless. That's usually the people that can do that. Um, play tennis, and they're going to have friends, and they're going to have these communities, whatever they care about. And there's some really good, great examples that I, I heard from Keller Williams uh, this last weekend, uh, uh, this last weekend at, at uh, Inman Connect. But I believe that that will be where those truly independent agents can survive is when you don't do any of the other stuff. You just own a community, and by owning whatever that is, whether it's uh, you know adopting you know kill shelter dogs or a tennis player or you know, a uh, uh, boating enthusiast who loves to chain smoke and drink like crazy all summer long. Like whatever it is, you lean right. into it. And when you lean into it, Craig, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you lean into it, you can own that market. So, Greg, maybe you need to get lighters with a bottle opener on the back and have them on everyone's boat. And then everyone will call you around the Delta. You know, I mean, like that is, I think, where those independent agents will thrive. And those independent agents could be part of something like, a, like a, you know, an EXP, something where they don't have to go and even have a boss. Um, yeah. So that, that's where I think the, the future goes and how likely kind of plugs into both worlds there um, is that for people that have in that new world five years from now, um, you know, our modeling abilities are scaling daily. And we have on the roadmap is working basically creating offline look like models for, for, for agents, for teams, right? That can look historically in a long ways to actually say, hey, these are more people like you close, right? And then you also have like the large organizations that have become very, very smart. They're operational at scale and their budgets dictate that they can own 70% of the market. That's hmm. where I think this one's gonna be. You know, it's interesting because you're seeing the same thing we're seeing. We've been talking about since beginning of 2019 that it's not a transactional business. It's a it's a relationship-based business, and that's exactly what you're seeing as well, that go out and play tennis, yeah. go play golf, go be a part of some sort of or, philanthropic or just sports, you know, some sort of activity where you're, you're known as you, right? So last year yeah. I wanted to get uh, in a little bit better shape uh, for my first Spartan race. So I saw an advertisement for kickboxing. And so I went and I signed up for this kickboxing class and I went every er, like three times a week. And when I always joke, if you sweat next to somebody, you know, you, you eventually you're gonna start to trust them because you're, you're fighting together, you, you'll work together. And I had about three or four people in there, um, you know, really expressed interest about doing, you know, real estate or, you know, working together just because we're sitting here slug, slugging away. They're like, hey man, I, I heard you take a call. Are you in real estate? Or, you know, it's one gal come, come up, came up to me and she's like, Oh, you have a real estate shirt on Are you in real estate? And those relationships, you know, built to the point where I, I was out with my girlfriend in San Francisco last year. And I'm like, hey, my actually the other girl's name is the same name as my girlfriend. And I'm like, Jackie works at this bar. And so we went there and she we, we said hi and she comped us a drink and we just built those relationships. And it, I think that's incredibly powerful. You know, a good friend of ours, a good friend of the show, Hank Avick, Coach Hank, what up, homie? If you're watching, much love. We got to talk sometime soon. Um, you know, he has a system called 50, 25, and 1. It's all about, you know, going out and making 50 contacts with people, having 20 comments, you know, five conversations and one in-depth life-changing conversation a day. And it's, I, 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 would, I would honestly hope that at some point, I mean, I think the cold calling, the flyers and all that stuff is going to be a necessary evil at some level. I mean, I got a guy this morning I called, I called back, and he called me douchebag, asshole, Fuck face, you know, stupid, and every other wonderful term probably about 20 times. And I said, Dad? 
glad you're on fire today. <laughs> um, but this guy, I'm like, dude, man, I'm just trying to help you sell your home. And, and, and he's like, I'm a real estate agent. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, man, I hope you just buy, die of a flesh-eating disease alone in the jungle. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, those type of people will phase out because the relationship ability, I don't believe, is in their DNA. And I, th and I would love to see this business would transform to more of a relationship-based business. We all need to have those more interpersonal communications and relationships because these cell phones, these smartphones, everything is driving us apart. And I love how, how you're seeing that matrix change, Brad. I think that's really, really cool. Um, so Thank you. when it comes to, um, do you see calls, uh, social media, flyers, door knocking, pop buys, those are still part of the, the, the you, you bake that into following up with these leads right now, right? I'm sorry, my computer just got choppy there. I only heard a little bit of what you said, just that last bit. Sorry. I said that I'm amazing, and you should kiss my toes. Um. <laughs> you heard that. Now I only caught the last bit of it, and I wish I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greg, let me. Can I jump in here? Because sure, I, I wanted I wanted to ask the same question because one of one of the listeners, Michael Cohen, actually asked in the side. So, Brad, can you hear, hear me? Okay. I can. So here's what he says. This guy says, there aren't any magic pills, but this is making sense. However, I continue to believe and produce clients through old school methods like calls, text, emails, random conversations, meetups, door knocking and events, getting out and getting known. And I said to him, so I think you're 100% right. You're still going to do all that. The difference here is that you know who to do it with right away so that you get a better ROI on your time. Like, is that sort of the, the MO? That's pretty much the MO. That's exactly right. Is I mean, think of us as a... And uh, in military terms, it'd be a force multiplier, right? Uh, in agents' terms, it's an agent multiplier. Um, you know, they some people have asked the question: Is it cheaper? You know, if you're looking, you know, when, so am I going to save money or make more money? Um, I, I've used the analogy of World War II versus today, right? Um, World War II was very expensive for a lot of reasons, but we also had to build hundreds of thousands of planes and drop hundreds of millions of bombs to hit a couple of targets that we mostly missed. Today, we have one, you know, I don't know, cruise missile or F-22 that drops a laser-guided munition that hits a target every single time. Is it any cheaper today? Or is it just a lot more efficient and effective across the board? I think that you're going to have to pair the intelligence. It's like strapping a laser-guiding tool on a dumb bomb, right? Making something that works. It still explodes, still does the job, calling, emailing, texting, but now you're targeting where that should that effect should take a place. Well, see, the so, thing that I, I, li I like about this the most is the fact that a lot of agents, it, it, for a while there, it was, it was a bragging thing of like, oh, I get a thousand leads a month. Uh, okay, but that's you. That's irrational to think that you can follow up with a thousand people, then two thousand. Well, and, 4, and now people. that's only two deals. That's two deals yeah. in there. In those, in those <laughs> thousand leads, exactly two point two homes will sell out of those thousand leads, which is but, insane, insane number. I, and I, Jack, Greg, I, Greg, I call those vanity metrics. Yeah, those exactly. are things yep. that people are focusing on to make them feel positive about what they're doing. But what they need to focus on are actionable metrics. Actionable metrics would be lead to listing, lead to close. Right in a world where there's 300, 200 million leads generated a year, cost per lead is not your problem. No, it's just not anymore. No, it isn't because you know what? It, people brag about the fact like, hey, I, I can get a lead for ten cents or two cents, right? Well, that's what their value is. I, we, we, all of us in this real estate game, we yeah. will gladly pay twenty five percent of the sales price for a hot lead that's going to be doing something. So, I mean, I hope people would still want to do that. But, I mean, in all actuality, if I do three to five deals a month max, dude, you're going to live a great freaking life. And you're going to have quality of life. And you can, mm -hmm. as our boy Hank always talks about who's, who he's here, so much love, homie. Uh, he talks, you know, talks about 36 to life. <laughs> three deals a month, 12 months, 36 deals. You have a life. Just move up the price point. You do the same amount of work, probably even less, because you're going to get people to work for you. And you get to go enjoy life, and you can you can you can handle that workload as an independent agent or as a small team. I mean, and you now with you now we're not squirrels going to ten different directions. Here, dum dum, here is your box of leads for the next ninety days. 
don't fucking speak to any other human. Talk to these people. End of story. Well, they, I, uh, one thing to add to that we haven't talked about at all is um, a lot of people books. have a preconceived notion of what a lead is. It's a name, a phone number, an email, an address, and that's kind of where the buck stops. Um, I didn't think that was very good. So we have over 4,000 data points in every property. We boiled it down to what we deliver is 138 data points with each likely seller. And so that way you can be very nuanced in if you have the you know, sophistication to create sub personas and then market to them very differently. So um, women that are, you know, are uh, single, um, that are this age bracket, do this. Uh, we have a client in, um, in Chicago. I go, yeah, he's Polish and he's got a Russian agent on his team. And when he saw that we give him the language spoken, he's like, oh, excellent. I'm going to do all of my marketing in Russian to those guys. And I'm going to have my Russian guy follow up with them. And that way, you know, when they get a postcard, the the shelf life of that just drastically increased because they don't get anything in Russian. Everything's in English. And so in, in the southern states, it's, it's you know, it could be uh, Spanish and, you know, the, the northwest. It's French. Like whatever it is, like there are a ton of other languages spoken, yet everyone only markets it in English. So talk to your audience the way that they want to talk to you. And that's a very simple example. But, I mean, we have data points on, you know, uh, what type of uh, – are they a Republican or Democrat? They Do they spend time in memorabilia for military things or do they love gardening or whatever? And, like, hey, rather than selling everybody, I don't know, your recipe of the month for soup – Maybe send that woman on what seeds to plant in spring and this guy over here about what beer is best, you know, paired with a burger, right? I mean, those are the kind of things that are very unique and and that um, can have the shelf life that right now agents just don't get. So wait, are, you, are you telling me that when you create these data points for me, I'm going to see stuff like that? Yeah, no, no, we have it. We have, uh, we have over seven terabytes of data and it grows every single day. I mean, it's a, it's a massive amount of, of data. We have, so just as an example, um, in our demographic table, which is where this kind of stuff we're talking about right now is, um, we have 417 data points on every person or every demographic file. Uh, we have north of 268 million demographic files, right? We put all of that data, which are the people, into the properties, right? And then we get a really good sense of what's going on when we layer in things that aren't directly associated, so weather patterns, VIX index, consumer confidence, things that are invisible but make us do things, <laughs> kind of the puppets of the universe. So when you come down to the individual level, which is where a lot of the data aggregators and, and modelers, they stop at like the zip code level or something like that, we went down to the rooftop, uh, so it has to be the rooftop or individual, otherwise we don't use it. It, so, it, it, do, are we going to run into any? There's a good question in the in the in the side. Antonio was asking, how do you market the subsections of people with HUD rules? You know, how do you anything there? Have you ran into that at all? With with HUD rules, well, I can tell you this: that we got we an approved vendor for a top four bank. Uh, we spent two and a half weeks with a team. It was me versus thirteen lawyers. And they took every single one of our demographic <laughs> data points. It was the most painful two weeks of my life. Um, I to imagine, origin. Too. <laughs> I mean, to origin, and then they wanted to know what that origin. I mean, it was, like, so painful. And so there were certain things that, you know, from a redlining standpoint, that they just didn't want as input to the model. But once the model's trained in doing what it does, it's not deciding based upon race, gender, um, you know, presence of children, disabilities, any of the big factors that would be a, a HUD problem. Uh, we see that the predictions are pretty cleanly spread across opportunity zones, high affluence uh, areas versus low affluency. Um, that's why when we first did this, there were a lot of known unknowns. So we picked 10 counties that represented the nation. We had places in Northeast, Northwest, uh, Florida, Texas, the so non-disclosure states. Was it was it in desert? Was it in the mountains? Was it by the ocean, a lake? Um, you know, what was the you know the property landscape looked like? Were they row houses or condos or ranches or mansions? Like all of those things play into this. Um, and then what time of year was it? Because now you have weather patterns. So all of those pieces we brought together to make sure our model wasn't gonna be racist like the. Uh, famously like the Microsoft chatbot. 
right? Because it's not being trained on every tweet that was ever out there, right? We are making sure that we limit it to what we believe would be a good, clean training set to allow us to get the best results. Hmm. That makes sense. That's... All right, so I've got one final question for you, especially from the perspective of big teams. But before that, uh, how do people just learn more? How do they connect with you guys and, uh, and actually get into the, the nuts and bolts of whether they're the right fit for you? Yeah, great question. Um, so go to uh, likely.ai. That's the, the website. So it's not .com. It's likely.ai. Um, you can browse around there. It's really an informational site. Uh, fill out the form or engage with the, the Facebook chat bot thingy. And, um, you know, then we'll, we'll jump on there and, and get you on a call. So what, we, what we're looking for are those teams that um, have been burned by SmartZip or OfferPad or First or who you name the one that's, that they've tried and it just wasn't a fit because they were looking for something to be more precise. Well, we all know my, my personal opinion. Predictive of, analytic uh, platform out there. Well, everyone knows my opinion of SmartZip. I have made that abundantly clear in the past on yes, these yeah. shows. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. and we did, and shan't not be rehashed. At least not, not this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's, yeah. we'll so, I mean, to we're, we're looking for those teams that, that want to use this and got burned. That's yeah. it. You know, we love to talk to you guys. I mean, if you guys are at least uh, doing, what, 25 deals a year, I mean, you know, two deals a month, it means you're a real agent. You know, what, this is not meant to be a crystal ball for someone who – you know, wants to do part-time work. Uh, we're looking right. for for true, uh, you know, producers that that want to either you know take it to the next level or dominate new markets more efficiently. So they just go to likely.ai and they can apply there. Yep. Yeah. This uh, pretty much any button on that site will give you the option to contact us, and then we you know follow up with you and ask you some more qualifying questions, and then we schedule a call. Uh, on the call, we get a little bit more deep into it, verify your area, and then we, it's really simple. We do a three-page agreement, six-month pilot. Everything pans out from there. Then, you know, we roll you over that you're, you're one of our solids in that county or set of counties. You know, I just got a crazy email this came across. It was that there has been uh, reports of micro explosions all over the U.S. just now. People's heads were exploding with data. Brad, that's no. your fault. You just scared the shit out of me. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was terrible. That was terrible. Oh, oh, man. I thought we were having, like, an Australian wildfire migration that was breaking out. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. You're not allowed Jesus. to talk for the rest of the show. Dean Wolfie, how do people connect with you? <laughs> Listen, Matt Johnson, I want to tell you something real quick. When Brad fr first got on the call, I was like, well, I know who the better looking McDaniel is. And then as he started talking, I'm like, fuck, he's smarter too. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, real, well, real, real, so I'm Brad, sorry? I'm going to be calling you because I got ideas, man. I, I, I'd love to hear him. Um, uh, what we're looking for as well as uh, people like you that have uh, very creative ways to execute because <laughs> even top teams that are great at doing what they're doing today, um, because this is um, a new thing, they want reassurance or additional best practices around how to do it. So that way, you know, when they look at their marketing spend, um, you know, they can report back to their boss, their wife, that they're doing the right thing <laughs> or husband, excuse me. They want to say it's one, only one way, right? Their partner. <laughs> um, so uh, we would love to, we'd love to have those conversations. Awesome. Cool. That's yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, another phone call. So we'll talk about it. That's, I'm on the likely AI site and I just clicked the button and it says boxers or briefs. Do I have to answer that or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, you, you can go with other if you'd like. <laughs> well, here's the thing. None. Gene, they all, they, they yeah. already know. They already yeah, know. They, they know streaking wasn't lying. an option. We took that one down. I thought streaking was on there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn it. Commando. They don't need to know whether you wear boxers or briefs. They just want to see if you're going to lie about it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So, Matt, real quick, and I'm jumping out of the way. GeneVolpe.com is where you get me um, uh, for really any of your marketing needs. So any anything you need digitally, uh, just reach out. Every You know, I, I these people don't know this a lot of times, but I do a, a digital architect section, session for an hour for free. So if you want to figure out where you want to go and, if, and maybe if you want to figure out a way how you can incorporate likely AI and Brad into your system, call me and I'll work, work you through soup to nuts, who you're looking for, how to get there, and how to get your commission. So GeneVolby.com, fill it out, and we'll do a one-on-one. -on -one. Nice. All right. Um, 
Uh, and Greg, people will connect with you by texting your cell phone, 925-915-1978. I wasn't serious. I wasn't kidding about you not texting, speaking for the rest of the episode. <laughs> I'm just going to deliver your call to action. How's that? You are you are officially on unofficial mute over there. So people, uh, if you want to get a good swift <laughs> kick in the pants or coaching on prospecting, um, on, a, on a serious note, Greg is one of the best prospectors yeah. that anyone I've talked to has ever seen and or heard. And so if you want to up your prospect, game uh, even if you're going into something like where let, let's say you were to contract with a company like likely AI and you're getting the leads Greg knows exactly how to talk to those leads so even down at that level if you already know you're talking to the right people you still have to be able to talk to them and convert them so the, the skills of talking on the phone have not gone away and they're more important than ever because if you know you're talking to the right person and you pay for the information and you pay for the marketing to get them on the phone you got to be able to close them and that's where Greg can come in so how's that Greg I'll give you one word response is that good I'm just gonna shut forward? up at the end of all these shows and just let you do my job oh, this is good dude I'm taking notes I love it. Um, so we got to pick a color for the bow, Johnson Face. What what is the color of the bow? Mm, I'm having a purple day. Let's go with purple. How's that? <laughs> like the okay. like a friendly dinosaur. <laughs> How about like TCU? <laughs> there we oh, go. Yeah, also <laughs> good. TCU. Also good. There you go. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the show. We really appreciate it, Brad. This is some really interesting stuff, guys. Go to likely.ai. Uh, you can really sign up for this. I, I can attest hand to God, this is real. This is not smoke and mirrors. This is not snake oil. This is real, real stuff. And as you can tell, he has more than a few things going between his ears. So he'll be able to answer your questions and get you guys going the right way. So, Brad, I appreciate you, man. I love you. I'm um, really proud of you. This is some really, really cool stuff. Jonathan, I don't know how I feel about you because you, you, you unofficially muted me. So that hurt my feelers. <laughs> that heart of coal is coming back. Um, and then, Gene, you're a G amongst men. We love you to pieces. As always, guys, peace out, ninjas. We're gone.